Gaia Pope was a 19-year-old woman who lived near Swanage, Dorset. She had a history of mental health problems and epilepsy, which were triggered by a traumatic event in her life. When she was 16, she reported being raped by a man to Dorset police. But she felt that the police did not believe her and did not charge the man. She was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and suffered from severe seizures that affected her memory and behavior. In 2017, Gaia's mental health worsened when she learned that her alleged rapist was released from prison for other sex offenses. She had episodes of psychosis and paranoia, and was admitted to Poole Hospital twice the year. The first time, she was sectioned under the Mental Health Act after a seizure. The second time, she was discharged without any follow-up care or referral to the mental health crisis team. Her doctor admitted that he did not contact her neurologist or consider her epilepsy condition. On November 7, 2017, Gaia went missing from her aunt's home in Swanage. She was feeling anxious and scared after receiving a text message from her alleged rapist sister. Her family tried to report her missing to Dorset police several times, but they faced delays and errors in the police response. A massive search operation involving hundreds of volunteers was launched, but it took 11 days to find Gaia's body in a field near the clifftops. A post-mortem examination revealed that she died of hypothermia. Gaia's case exposed the failures of both the police and the mental health services in protecting her and supporting her needs. The police were criticized for their handling of her rape allegation, their search operation, and their communication with her family. The mental health services were criticized for their lack of assessment, care, and coordination for Gaia's complex condition. A jury inquest concluded that Gaia's death was probably caused by her mental health and mental state on the day she disappeared, and that a failure to provide follow-up care after she was discharged from hospital may also have been a factor. The failures of Dorset police in handling her disappearance, such as the delayed missing person report, the lack of communication with the family, the wrongful arrests of three suspects, and the termination of her phone calls. Gaia's family tried to report her missing as soon as they realized she had left her aunt's home in Swanage on November 7th. Her mother called the police at 1615, and her aunt called five times between 1630 and 18 but a formal missing person report was not logged by police until 1815, more than two hours after Gaia had disappeared. This delay meant that crucial opportunities to find Gaia were missed. The police did not activate a system that could have traced her phone location, nor did they request CCTV footage from nearby shops and buses until days later. They also failed to alert other agencies, such as the Coast Guard, and the National Crime Agency that could have helped with the search. Gaia's family also felt that the police did not communicate with them effectively or compassionately. They said they were given conflicting information, ignored, or treated with suspicion by some officers. They were not informed of important developments, such as the discovery of Gaia's clothes near a coastal path on November 10th. The police also made a series of wrongful arrests that caused distress to Gaia's family and friends. On November 13th, they arrested a 19-year-old man who was Gaia's friend on suspicion of murder. The next day, they arrested a 71-year-old woman and a 49-year-old man who were relatives of the first suspect on suspicion of murder as well. All three were released under investigation after being questioned for several hours. The police later admitted that these arrests were based on a misunderstanding of CCTV footage that showed Gaia running past a petrol station on the day she went missing. They thought she was being chased by someone, but it turned out she was running away from a car that had beeped at her. The police also terminated several phone calls that Gaia made to them in the months before she went missing. 
a police whistleblower revealed that Gaia had called the police on 28 occasions between June and November 2017, but only four calls were recorded and logged. The rest were ended by police because they said Gaia was abusive or uncooperative. Gaia's family said these phone calls were cries for help from a vulnerable young woman who had been raped and was suffering from PTSD and epilepsy. They said the police should have listened to her and offered her support and protection. The police watchdog, the Independent Office for Police Conduct, IPC, investigated the actions of Dorset police and found several failings in their response to Gaia's disappearance and death. They issued misconduct notices to nine officers and staff members, and one officer received a final warning after a disciplinary hearing. The coroner at Gaia's inquest also made wide-ranging recommendations for Dorset police to improve their policies and practices on missing persons investigations, safeguarding vulnerable people, communication with families, and training on mental health and rape cases.